want you to, I want you to see my place. <laughs> yeah, well, that must be the world famous uh, chief, right? <laughs> yeah. Hey, chief, let me see you. Be oh, good. That poor baby. Come to Papa. <laughs> oh, you. Come here, come here. Hey, chief, say hello to me. I heard so much about you. Yes. Oh, that poor baby's got to have this stuff. How long does he have to have it on for? Oh, just for a couple of more days. Just a couple yeah. more days? Hey, my boy. Here, come on. What's up, baby? I think you're like, oh, gee, sorry. Oh, my God. Oh. I'm sorry. Oh, no, don't. I do it that every happens time. happens all the time. I put that in the wrong yeah, place. The dirt came out now. Let me get it. You got a vacuum cleaner? No, absolutely well, not. Well, that I'll get that. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, it is a nice place you got here, though. I must say, it is, uh, you know, you got all the knickknacks here. Look at this. You got a fancy plate collection and everything. What'd you do, boost these things from uh, Queen of England or something? <laughs> yeah, look at this. I noticed this has got real value. I know these things. I like your shirt. Yeah? You look good. You do too. Thank you. You look, uh, you look like a racehorse or something. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it's a lineup. Like yeah, it is. A yeah. Who's the murderer? Right in the middle. 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 I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to go start left, and then we're going to just go to right. Okay, out the And we're going to do it on the count. Are you ready? <laughs> One, two, three, four, who's that? I want to thank Toronto for raising me to love movies. Hello, hello! Everyone has a big imagination. All of us do. This is exciting, my first film to premiere here at the Toronto Film Festival. It's an exciting night. You are the most globally exciting festival in the world. Hello and welcome to the press conference for Manglehorn. A few points before we begin. This press conference will be screened live at www.tiff.net and still photographs will be made available on TIFF's media site. Volunteers are in the room with microphones to assist you with your questions. Please remember to identify yourself and your media outlet. Please note, no photography is permitted during this press conference. Only those pre-approved wire services may take photographs, and we ask that you do so from behind the first row. If you could take a moment to turn your cell phones to silent. Our moderator for today is Henri Behar, and it is now my pleasure to welcome the director and cast of Manglehorn. Thank you. Welcome to the press conference for Mangle Horn. And before, while everybody's sitting down, uh, just a quick reminder if you want to ask a question, please raise your hand a little bit ahead of time so that we can see you so that you can get the microphone so we don't waste any time. The press conference will last 30 minutes, not one more. Um, with us today, sitting next to me, a man whose first film was shown here in Toronto in the discovery section, well, I guess he graduated to gala, David Gordon Green. At uh, the far end, uh, usually known as a director, here just as an actor, and quote unquote, Harmony Corrine. <laughs> Between the two, two icons that need no introduction whatsoever, Miss Holly Hunter and Mr. Al Pacino. And I guess the first question will go 
to you and about your harmony, Corinne. Uh, those two guys are pillars of our film culture, your icons, you're just psh. This guy <laughs> is a director of Trash Humpers. He wrote Kids, he just did, did Julian Donkey Boy, Spring Breakers, nowhere in any wildest dreams of anybody would one imagine that he would be an actor with you two guys. So, how did it feel? How did you pick him up? How did you guys feel? Okay, Harmon, you go ahead. Yeah, it was trippy. Um, it was good. I, uh, I just got, I don't really act that much, but um, you know, David's a friend and he wrote me when I was doing Press and Spring Breakers and just asked me if I wanted to do this movie with Al. And I was like, yeah. I mean, I didn't even need to see the script. I was like, of course. Um, and um, it's one of those awesome moments that, you know, just kind of, it just uh, came, popped up in front of me and it was great. It was, it was, it was terrific. David? Um, yeah, I was, I was actually um, working on the film, uh, trying to cast the film and, and was at the South by Southwest Film Festival where Harmony was presenting Spring Breakers and had introduced the movie and was uh, doing, a Q, doing Q and A's and I thought, well, that's a, there's, a real, there's a real charisma in there, something I, I would love to play with as a director and we'd known each other and I just reached out to him uh, over an email and said, hey, any interest in, in uh, being in this movie? Uh, I'm putting together, and uh, I think his I think his response was sounds dope. So I was like, great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Does he take direction at all? No, no. No, <laughs> oh. <laughs> no yeah. You know, it was, it was actually fun. It was actually I look at it in a couple ways. One is you never really know what what's what's going to happen. I love the unpredictable, playful quality that he has as, <laughs> as an actor. There we go. Bastard. Yep. And um, unpredictable, playful qualities here at press conferences as well. I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so we play a lot and uh, and just come up with stuff. And it's also cool. Like there's a couple times I'd be like, man, I, you know, you, as a director, you got so much going on in your head. Sometimes it gets a little crazy. And I'd be like, you know, we were doing this the, this fight scene between Alan Harmony, and it's just like, you know, you don't want in a movie like this. You don't. What are you going to try to do? Do a fight, cool fight scene? You know. So I didn't really want to shoot a cool fight scene. Where I was kind of struggling with how to how to shoot it, how to approach it. And uh, you know, Harmony would say, "Hey, well, what about being on the other side of the van, just down on the ground, and ha you know, have cool ideas to be able to contribute to the process?" Which I'm really open to. If an actor has an idea for a scene and dialogue, or uh, where to put a camera that seems like a uh, an inventive place, like I just I love everybody to bring all their tools, whatever they whatever their their experience, their um, um, you know, their life, bring it to the table, and let's make movies. Al, uh, Harmony, we talk about uh, Harmony. Yeah. I never met anyone like him. <laughs> I mean, he is, he is simply amazing. He's, you know, that's the first thing I said. <laughs> when this guy got that guy, and I had a scene with him, you know, in that, the, the, where were we in a bar with, the casino, the, yeah. the casino with slot machines, and I'm over there sitting there, and he's my pro, one of my prize students. <laughs> and I just met him, and uh, I just immediately just liked him. I really just liked him. I just liked his <laughs> gestalt. And, and then we started the scene, and David says to him, you know, just keep talking. Well, we all can sort of keep talking. Like, you'll, if I'm here long enough, you'll find out with me too. But we can't <laughs> talk like he does. And he just started a rap. And things were, you know, it was a free association ride. It was a joyous experience, one of the great experiences of my, my, my film life, to be honest with you, wow. hearing this guy <laughs> just go through it. He went to every, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying, I'm gonna try to find the footage that isn't in the picture, because you couldn't p put it in, because it's just a film in and of itself, and because he just started free associating. And it was over, and I was stunned. First of all, during the take, I had to keep from laughing, things like that, because <laughs> he reached levels of, I mean, you know, you, you, you've heard it before, but uh, you haven't. You haven't heard his read on things. And because the mind, and you realized afterward, I said, you, you are a writer and an actor and a director because only a writer could, could I mean, it's James Joyce, all right? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Someone else, you Wait. know what I'm saying? <laughs> Wait, this one fell too. I knew you were going to leave me in that 
What's going on? My old friend. It's like a go ghost up here. <laughs> <laughs> now doing this. Do the rest. Wait, we got it. I'm we ready. Wait, <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. Let it go. Oh, now this is going. <laughs> now the proper and what part. Did they, do? they destroyed the press conference. They just threw stuff all over the place. <laughs> Anyway, it, I got excited because it really was an exciting thing. When, you, when you're around something that you know ain't ever going to happen again, <laughs> you get sort of excited. And listening to Harmony that day was, was thrilling. It was inspiring, really. And afterward, I said, <laughs> you know, this is called giving an actor something to do while they're talking. You take the owner for just talking. This is a good way to do things. <laughs> anyway, I love you. Come again, please. My home is open to you. <laughs> It'll dry. Holly? Yeah. No. Uh, oh, Holly. Your name's Holly? Sorry. Sorry. Holly. <laughs> Harmony Holly, you know. You don't have any scenes with him. With I Harmony. don't, but his reputation precedes him. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so because of his reputation, was it a relief not to have any scene with him? No, it would have been a t total joy. You know, I would have said yes to that. David, yeah, why that's, didn't that's, you? That's the sequel. No. <laughs> we hook up in the next movie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's a question here, then here, then here, and then here. Go ahead. I'm Rob Edelman, WAMC Northeast Public Radio. This is for Al Pacino. What attracted you to these two projects, both um, Humbling and Manglehorn? Um, was it the specific characters and their issues, their personalities? Was it their age appropriateness, or was it something else? Well, it was a few of those things that you mentioned, of course. And, uh, you know, the, 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 but they're different uh, uh, animals. The humbling came out of my reading of a Philip Roth novel and feeling that there was something in that novel about an actor that I could relate to. And... It's always a bit uh, um, like it's 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 it, when you're in a film to get a know the kind of world the characters in and the world the film is going to take place in and have a knowledge of that world which I would naturally have being an actor and it's about our world. I thought what an interesting idea. I got Barry Levinson felt the same way. I thought it it had this element of comedy to it, so I saw it as a tragic comedy as did Barry, and we got Buck Henry wrote the script, and it was that kind of in-house thing. This is something else, because uh, I've been a fan of David Gordon Green's for a while, and, and I, I saw this gift he has, and I thought no matter what he does, he's gonna do something to a thing. And I met him earlier, and he seemed to, uh, he and I were talking about a particular project that, uh, was in the works, and, and I guess that was it. We talked, parted the uh, company uh, amicably, and it was a done deal. And then a year later, he called me and wrote a movie for me. So I thought there must have been something he saw during that meeting, and it turns out he did. And so I was, uh, I was interested, of course, and he sent me a script, and uh, it was a, a, a very interesting script. It had a lot of stuff in it that, you know, was a little, it was unusual. It wasn't a world I was familiar with. And, and yet I felt this, uh, you know, I've always been a big fan of any director that wants me. I don't mean it that way. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm, I'm a fan, but when I'm a fan and they want me in their picture, because I believe when a director sees you in a role, that you know you're gonna get involved with something that they see and will, and, and I know they'll be supportive. That was The Godfather. Francis Coppola wanted me in The Godfather above everybody else. Nobody else wanted me in it, and he did. And he stuck with that, and for a reason, and I was in it knowing all the time that how supportive he was of having me, not so much of whatever my talent was or not, there was something in my person that he saw that made him, want to use me for this role. The same thing with David, he wanted to use me. Uh, so I started to see myself in the part in some ways, you know, and, and uh, where I would normally re reject it, I, 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 I knew that, and it was always, uh, you know, I was always turning away from it. You know, I, I do go through that process a lot anyway. 
I didn't with the humbling, but I, I did here. And then finally, I started to understand uh, the, the, the reasoning uh, uh, behind it. And, and I knew I was with a great director, and that was very helpful. I knew Holly was in it, and I was really excited about that, too. And then to, to, to see that th there was something in these letters that he was writing that was a way this character had of dealing with the issue he was in, the problem he was in, which was it, th th this obsessive, stuck in this obs on this obsessive track of, of dealing with the loss of, of this woman whom he actually probably was his first real love and, and somehow thought he could fix it, he could bring it back, he could revive it. And this was moving to me, and uh, he used it as a coping mechanism, I think. Uh, and it was an enabling him to go on. And uh, then his introducing Holly into his life was, in a way, oddly enough, a threat to that, which made me, uh, which I see when I see the movie that David made, which, which made for a kind of disjointed, uh, strange uh, reaction to her, which was push-pull, push-pull, which I found really interesting. I don't know that I've ever seen it. And uh, I, this, is, this is sort of set up by David. He, he and, and, and Paul wrote this thing in this way. And uh, I, 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 I at least went in that direction. I don't know if he knew I was doing this. I, I, I would imagine he did, because I see it in the movie. Well, he caught it on camera. I'm sorry? He caught it on camera. There I think you do it. I don't Question. mean to go on longer, but I could talk about the history of the world. <laughs> don't one. start me, you know. That's what happens when you get old. <laughs> you know, it's like running to first base. After you hit the ball, you run to first base, and you start going. And then at one point, you start going, and then you say, fuck, I better not stop, because I'm going to fall. Get it? <laughs> sir, then, sir. Go ahead. Going back for Latin America, I have a question for Al Pacino. If I have the numbers correct, you won your first Academy Award 25 years, 21 years ago, and that was 20, 21 years after your first nomination. So is it time for you to go back to that red carpet? Are you an Academy voter? No. Red carpet? For, for the Oscar. I thought they do the Oscars in a theater. Well, yeah, but before that. I've been on so many red carpets in the last, you know, I, I went to a couple of festivals, and I have two films in this festival, so I'm, I'm, al I'm always on a red carpet. <laughs> I started to like it. Just the other day, I thought, hey, this ain't bad. You can, you can make friends on it. You can sort of meet different people. Old friends come together. Sorry, I, I know we got to ask other questions, but I don't know. I, 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 didn't, I didn't quite understand your question. Could you say it again? You think it's time for you to get another Academy Award? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, Good afternoon. Uh, Bruce Kirkland from the uh, Toronto Sun. This is the uh, question for the three actors. Uh, but since you're on a roll, Mr. Pacino, uh, you should start scary. this role. What are you doing? No, but here's, here's the deal. He creates these arcane, individualistic, very low-key worlds that are off the beaten track of America. I instantly could imagine, it's Texas, I could imagine Holly Hunter in this movie. The two gentlemen here, I'm not thinking like he does that I want to put these two guys into a, you know, this kind of arcane world in Texas. Yeah. So I'm yeah. curious for each of you to talk about living in this world that he's created in that particular town in a state that where in some ways you don't belong. Yeah. Well, the, the truth is my character doesn't belong there. The truth is my character came from someplace else, north of that place, and uh, had another life. I don't know if you picked that up in the movie, but he comes from another place that, you know, the earring, the thing, the, the, and that was long ago, too. That's, that's, that's going back 40 years where he comes from, easy, and uh, what, what worlds he traveled in. Uh, either you can f sense it, but uh, that guy comes from another world, and he acclimates, because that's what we do, he acclimates to the environment as best he can, and picks up some of the, you know, some of the, what would you call it? Um, 
some of the nuances of living in that part of the world that you would naturally pick up slight, you know, change of accent and, and things that move in because you, you're influenced by your surroundings. And that's sort of what, what uh, I, 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 I mercifully, I felt, you know, off the hook and trying to be a guy that comes from there. So maybe my, my being a bit of a foreigner to it uh, worked into the character. I sort of thought it was credible with this character. But in a way, picking up on what you said and picking up on what you asked, Bruce, uh, both you, Holly, and you uh, are extremely careful when you build a character about the way he looks or she looks, what he wears, how he moves. I mean, every single hair of your beard, you know exactly what it's doing. I mean, his beard. <laughs> uh, could, you, could you tell us about how you just physically designed the character that you portray in the film? Looking at you, you're completely different from what you look like on screen, Holly. Well, uh, uh, David's wife uh, designed the costumes, and she, like David, is a real an incredibly collaborative spirit, um, as well as having a strong point of view herself. So it was really fun to kind of go on the adventure of, of figuring out what this character would look like. And, and I felt that she would be um, inherently feminine, um, that, that first off, it would be great to have a real feminine spirit in the center of this male exploration of, of the world, you know, of this male psyche, to have this real feminine freshness uh, there in, in, in the center. And I, you know, it, it's, I've said it before, but her name is Dawn. So I, Jill and I went, okay, what are the colors of the beginning of the day? Um, just go with the literalness of that. And it kind of, you know, took us onto this diving board of that palette for the character, which might not have been expressed in any other place in the movie, but which we thought would be wonderful for her. And at the same time, I, do you work, do you have like a, a palette that you use? As no, you know, you, I really just like to yeah, draw, it from the, draw it from the actors, draw it from the characters. And, yeah, and I, d I, would, I wasn't feeling any, any limitations at all from, from David. Like, oh, yeah, you don't, please don't use green. I, I, this is not a movie about green. It, that wasn't happening. So uh, there was tremendous freedom, and, you know, uh, it, it, they had to feel right to me. I liked, I wanted everything to feel good to me, to feel good to the touch. Uh, I wanted Dawn to be a fully accessible person, you know, that you would just feel attracted to um, and unintimidated by. So I wanted the clothing to kind of reflect that. We'll take, I'm afraid, the last two questions, or three, but I'm all, go ahead, ma'am. So this, this I'm Swati Sharan from Minority Review, and uh, Mike, I have questions for uh, Al, uh, Mr. Pacino and uh, Holly here. Um, okay, for I, I guess my question here is uh, for directed to Mr. Pacino. Uh, how can you detach yourself from some of your the depressed characters that you play, and yet be so loving and light in real life? And Holly, uh, how are you able to you know have such a you know like how are you also able to detach yourself? from you know from your characters do you take your characters home guys well when I was younger I think I did oh I, I sort of yeah they, they stayed with me but as I got older I I just naturally um, detach easier I, I can let them go uh, easier because it, it I feel by letting them go I can be revived when I go back that day and have more energy you know so it's not so it's it becomes something to get into both in your head and your emotions and you, like a getting into a costume you're getting into that state and it's it's sort of easier to do 
when you've been out of it to get back into it is you get in there with more, more alacrity. Holly? Well, I, 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 I feel the kind of the same way. I, 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 you know, like I don't want to stand on my mark for at the place where I'm doing the scene for too long. I want to kind of go away from there so that it's got a, 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 a newness to me. Um, and Al, were Al and I were talking earlier, but when I do a play, it's a little easier to not stay in character all the time, but the character tends to wa have a more of a wash uh, because you're doing the beginning and the middle of the story every night, the, the beginning, middle, and end, the, you know, over and over, and it tends to the, re the repetition of the story entire has a tendency to to I marinate in it a little more um, uh, intensively. Ma'am? You were kind of mixed TV. Question for uh, We, uh, growing up in Russia, Ukraine, we just adored you. I think you're the greatest actor in the world. And all your roles are so emotional and yet so different, totally different. And I'm just wondering if you could elaborate uh, like I, at least I love it here and not like in handling some joy and humility. Where do we draw your inspiration? How do you choose your roles? How do you choose the roles? Well, first, thank you very much for the, for the, the your comment. I, I choose my roles. It's varied throughout my life. And now I think I'm more, uh, I was going, trying to go with the glow. Meaning, you know, I believe that we go through cycles, and uh, th some people want to call it aging, but I, I don't know quite what that means. I mean, changing. Aging is something else, and it's, I guess there are times when it's appropriate. Certainly, it's very clear if you're an athlete, you know, you, you just, you know, you, you, like I said, you run to first base and you're afraid to stop because you'll fall, because uh, you can't just stop. You have to just slow down and get there. And I think now, I mean, uh, you know, I would think the position somewhat l l l luxurious position of being able to choose something I want to do. Uh, and I've, I've been in there for a while, and sometimes I haven't taken access to it. I've rather just went with what was there. Uh, and now I think I'm more or less thinking about where I'm at in my own cycle of things. and and. Well, I think that I could accommodate that that script or what it's talking about or what this character is going through. I think I have a sense of that, and I'm and and that's one thing to have a sense of it, and there's another thing to say, well, I wanna I wanna express it, you see. So I'm I'm I feel that that's somewhat of, I'm in a lucky place right now for that. I hope I continue to do it, so that I'm not doing things just to use the instrument. Because there's a certain amount of craft one needs uh, to be able to deal with the inspiration. I think that's very clear. But you don't want to load up with too much craft. You want to keep that openness to things. And so that's not a struggle once you understand that. It becomes more, more practical. I'm afraid our time is up. Thank you very much, all of you, I for being here. It, can we do a little longer? Yeah. I think I think I up took to too much time up with my long diatribes. Maybe five more minutes or something. Okay. Yeah. All right. So who has the mic? Okay. This this person, and then the lady next to him. Hi. Uh, uh, to to these uh, two legends, two actors, two great actors. Uh, I would like to ask you, uh, Mr. Pacino. Uh, Mr. Uh, Ms. Hunter, uh, uh, about uh, portraying a common man or a common woman, because it seems sometimes for the rest of, of the countries that are not uh, United States, that sometimes Hollywood is trying just to make biggest epic kind of films, and you show in this film that it's an enjoyment to, to portray these kind of regular people. Can you talk about it? No, 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 it's no, for it's both the, of the, us. The, the two of you. It's for both of us. Oh, yeah. Holly. Yeah. 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 You're, you're it's for both of you, please. <laughs> I'll answer it then, and then she'll answer. So, 
Uh, make it short, she'll make it long. <laughs> I won't make it long, but I, I, I'm just not a good editor. And uh, I, I think um, the idea of playing real people, people who have different lives than we do as actors, uh, is, is, I guess it's just an opportunity to get to know and understand other things besides this world that we're in, of uh, fame and, and all the stuff that goes with it. And it's in a strange kind of way, it's a, it's, it's a relief to get into someone else and, and the issues they have. And, and, and we find how similar they are to, to mine. And that's, that's, that's comforting in a way. So I enjoy that. And like, you know, you take somebody says, oh, let's make a movie about Picasso, you know, or this one or that one. And, and you say, I'd love to, but it's not about that. It's about the text. It's about what the writer's got to say, and that's the arrangement. That's the uh, connection actors have to the, there's the word. The play is the thing. Shakespeare said it, and he's right. The play is the thing. That's what keeps us uh, going and, and makes for life. Without a play, you know, six characters in search of an author, Pirandello, you know, it's, 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 it's the thing. And so you go, with the, you go where that is, and if you, it, admire a, a, a script if you feel that there's something you know you you want to say if you got an oboe or you got a cello you know you, you want to play Bach so the, the the kind of music of the of the text is 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 an incentive to an actor Ali? and and and, and your so In your question market. is sorry um but your question is is uh how is it that we Is it, is it? Well, you know, I, I, of course, uh, w one of the reasons why I like to act is because it's it's fun to bring the ordinary into the extraordinary because so many people um, have underlying complexities that you would just never anticipate. I mean, people endlessly surprise me, you know, people who are, their backs who they are after I, after I, if I make an initial judgment, I'm almost always wrong, you know, or it's so much more complicated than I ever imagined. And so that's what we get to do. That's why I like to live in New York, actually. I, I like to live in New York because people aren't in a car there. They're, I can see them. And so, and they're walking around and they're, they're so much exposed about everybody just by like walking on the streets and what they're doing, who they're talking, you know. So, so I, I, I love to watch people, I so love it. The cell phone makes it less interesting um, because so many people are on their cell phones now. It's kind of a, a bummer for the, for the eye. But um, I like, to, I like a, a story exactly f f like this for exactly for that reason because these are people that you might be somewhat fascinated with or not fascinated with at all, and then, but then David points the camera, and, and they've got a very interesting, unusual thing to tell. I'm afraid this time, no, I'm afraid this time, our time is up. Thank you very much for being here.